I'm on my way to see a home that dates from about the time of Jesus. Look at that, that's incredible. It doesn't look like a home though. It looks like ruins of a nuclear power station cooling tower. Musa is a small, uninhabited island just off the coast of Shetland. Closer to the Arctic Circle than Edinburgh, it's bitterly cold. It's taken me over a day and a half to get here by train, plane, boat, and now on foot. There's not a single tree here. It's wild, it's windswept. Calling it remote doesn't do it justice. So who lived on this wind-battered, tiny island 2,000 years ago? Peter, hi. Hi, Miriam. And how on earth did they make it their home? Wow. That is something else. Welcome to the best preserved prehistoric home in Europe. I struggle to understand that this is 2,000 years old. It's called a brock and it was built a thousand years before the first English castle. It's unusual because in those days, most people were living in roundhouses made of wattle and daub. It feels like, um, like a cathedral. It's got a real grand scale to it. Well, it's almost 14 metres high, five metre wide walls. You can hardly get a knife blade between some of the joints. There's no mortar whatsoever. So it's just layer upon layer of stone with nothing holding it together. I can't believe it survived for so long. It feels safe, yes. doesn't it? Yeah. This was high-rise living designed for the comfort of a clan chief. They kept animals on the ground floor because their heat rose to the floors above, where people lived and slept. The roof was probably made of timber and thatch. Where would they have got timber from? I think it's trade, being such a key strategic location on the great seaways of northern Europe and Scandinavia. So what were they trading? Uh, food surpluses from, from here, iron ore, copper ore, furs, sheep's wool. But slaving was a huge part of the economy of that time across Europe. So people trafficking would have been a part of it as well. That is incredible. Trade brought wealth, but it also brought conflict. The island frequently found itself under attack. They could have got maybe the women and children in here, got the most precious animals in here. Meanwhile, the, the men, it's always the poor men, you know, they'd have to go out there with their spears and... See them off. Yeah. Wow. Look at that view! Instead of seeing Musa as it is today, a remote outpost of the British Isles, I need to shift my thinking. Whilst most people were living in simple abodes, the Shetlanders built these massive homes, ingenious living spaces useful in times of peace and war. They were at the heart of a highly successful, wealthy society. The sea wasn't a barrier. It was a highway for bringing trade, people and ideas. This was where it was at. The place I'm visiting today is a time capsule. It's a unique site that tells the story of the first people just like us to live in this country. Extending for about a quarter of a mile on either side of this lake are limestone cliffs that are honeycombed with caves. And they are the homes of Britain's first Homo sapiens. I'm at Cresswell Crags, just 30 minutes drive from Sheffield. Over hundreds of millions of years, ice and water have carved out these dramatic limestone cliffs. Inside caves either side of this gorge, archaeologists have discovered tantalising evidence of how the first modern humans lived tens of thousands of years ago. We have this lovely piece, unique for Britain. This is actually a fragment of a horse rib. Oh. And can you see it's got this delicate engraving of a horse's head on it? <laughs> oh, look at that. 
This fragment of bone was decorative, but bone often had a much more practical purpose. This needle is an astonishing 15,000 years old. And this is what they were sewing their furry onesies with? <laughs> That's right. That's incredible. It seems so sophisticated, even though it's so ancient. It is, yeah. I want to see inside the caves where these artefacts were found and step back in time into the homes of our earliest ancestors. Wow. These dark spaces are some of the very first homes in Britain. Oh, my goodness me. Caves like this offered a lot of protection. They functioned as any room in a normal home today would. So they were using it as living room, as bedroom. They were lighting fires in here, sitting down, talking, repairing their weapons. And there's even evidence that they did a spot of home decorating. Lead the way, Paul. Lead the way. In this cave, there's something unique in Britain. So this here is Britain's only example of Ice Age cave art. Can you see these more faint engraved lines? This, we think, is a red deer stag. It is faint, yeah, isn't it? It is. Ah, oh, there's its head. Is That's that right? it. So there's its ear, its antlers, and the front of its face, and its eye. Mm-hmm. And there's its neck. The engravings in this cave demonstrate how much our ancestors relied on animals for survival. What you want to do is draw the pictures of red deer, tell the red deer stories so you keep all your information alive. So the artist might have been dreaming of his next venison burger. <laughs> yeah, it's a holiday snap on the wall <laughs> of your home, if you like. <laughs> That's fantastic. The evidence here at Cresswell Crags is absolutely amazing. It's a unique record of life in this country spanning over 50,000 years. These caves show us that people have always had the urge to do something more than just find shelter from the elements. The caves at Cresswell Crags show us that we've had that urge to create something more special, more meaningful, more personal, a place we can call home. In second place, surely one of the most impressive homes ever built, and one of the earliest in the world. Marianne Cotter investigates. The next home on our list is on a tiny island, just four miles long and one mile wide. And to get to it, I have to take the world's shortest scheduled flight. 90 seconds after this takes off, I'll be in Papa Westry. Papa Westray has 75 inhabitants and only a handful of homes, but one of those is so important it's made number two on our list. It's not only one of the most remarkable homes in Britain, but anywhere in the world. Julie, tell me about this place. Well, this is the Knapp of Hauer in Papa Westry, and um, this is the oldest upstanding house in Northwest Europe. This home, built by Stone Age people, is over five and a half thousand years old. It's older than the pyramids. It's older than Stonehenge. It's thought to be one of the very oldest purpose-built homes anywhere in the world. Can we have a look? Yeah, let's go. Brilliant. This home has survived because it was buried for thousands of years. Then, in 1929, a storm came in. And when the clouds cleared, an ancient home had been revealed. It had a tiny entrance designed to keep the heat in and wind out. So what would this area have been? Well, we've got an area here which looks like a living room. We have a stone platform, what we might describe as beds or sofas, some place to take you off the cold clay. It might be ancient, but in its own way, the Knapp is an astonishingly modern home. So what would this back room have been used for? Well, we have the fire, that's really important. What's this? Well, this is a quernstone. This is a sort of um, stone for grinding corn. 
grind them up into a kind of flour. It's incredible. Five and a half thousand years old, kitchen equipment. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's brilliant. So obviously the nap stone... proves that the people who lived here were skilled builders and successful farmers. But this home unlocks another secret. When people lived here, it couldn't have been this close to the open sea. And the reason we know that is because of these. Five and a half thousand year old oysters, and there are shed loads of them just eroding out of the sandy dunes. Now, oysters only thrive in sheltered, sandy, muddy estuaries, which is what this would have been. It wouldn't have been rocky and coastal in the way that it is now. It would have been a beautiful bit of secluded water, and it would have meant that the Nap of Hower was joined to the bigger island, Westray. This was the good life. A good climate, plenty of food, and a solid, well-built home. It's absolutely incredible to think that the Nap of Hower is over five and a half thousand years old. And when you're in there, it feels cosy, it feels practical. It doesn't take a great stretch of the imagination to put a roof on and imagine people still living there. <laughs>